In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. May the birth of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, be an infinite and abundant blessing to all Christians worldwide without any differentiation. May the Savior and the Redeemer of the world, the one who is the only way, the only truth, and the only life on this holy, glorious, and historical day that changed the history of mankind once and for all, be with you, guide you, save you, deliver you, and show you the way. Enlighten every heart, enlighten every intellect, enlighten every soul, every mind, every spirit, every being, wherever they are, whoever they are, and more so, the Christian world, Christendom, with all its factions. May the Lord Jesus bring us all together in the unity of heart, where we are able to embrace one another in His love, in His divine and genuine love, heavenly love, we embrace one another and may the Lord enlighten every soul to realize where the truth is and the way and eternal life lies. <clears throat> For it is all in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All glory to his holy and mighty name. Amen. So, um, Merry Christmas. I won't say Happy New Year yet because uh, we'll be celebrating the Holy Mass for the, for the New Year and I want you to come otherwise red belt in karate. Our beloved fathers, deacons, nuns and faithfuls, those who are with us in this Holy Church and those who are watching us through live streaming, may the Almighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth on His birthday, it is His birthday today, we can say Happy Birthday to the Lord Jesus, can't we? Amen. Come on, say happy birthday, Lord. Come on, clap, clap, yalla. That's right. You know, you need to shout for the Lord Jesus, not to this sick world. We need to shout for the Lord. But we need to pray for the world, for the Lord Jesus to enlighten the heart and show the way. Amen. Very good. Father, I don't need to introduce you. You're part of the family, okay? So, good to have you with us. <clears throat> the birth of the Lord. The gospel of today, according to St. Luke chapter 1, we see... Sorry, Eddie. Can we just put the reverb a little bit down? The reverb, a bit down. <clears throat> Yesterday was a long day. My throat is gone. You know, um, we have the Apostolic Church. A little bit more up. You either dry it up or just a touch up. Yep. Um, so we, yesterday we were here in the church praying for eight hours nonstop. So we thank the Lord Jesus. It's amazing. I thought my throat was not going to last five minutes. But you see, when you leave it in the Lord's capable hands, He can make it happen for you. Amen. So what is impossible to man is possible to God. And Jesus Christ is the true divine God revealed in the flesh, period. This area is non-negotiable. Negotiate with you on everything, but not on this one, because it is a non-negotiable area. Either the Lord Jesus is God or forget it. He cannot fit just to be a prophet. He cannot fit just to be a nice man. He cannot fit just to be a holy man. He's either God or everybody packs up their bags and go home. And I just wonder what kind of a home you're going to have. And Jesus Christ is not your home. I just wonder. So, therefore he is God. For he is. This is the truth. There is no other God but him. He is the creator of everyone and everything. And of course, when we say God, we do invoke 
the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one in nature, one in essence. But you see, the reason why Bishop Murray focuses on Jesus Christ, because our time and age claim to have also a belief in God. Which God? You need to specify this God. And that's why I focus on Jesus Christ of Nazareth, because he is the true divine God revealed in the flesh, the Son of God, the second person of the Holy Trinity that came down and dwelt in the womb of the Virgin of all virgins, our Holy Mother Mary. Should never lose track of the Holy Mother. Never. She is the mother of our Lord and Savior. She is our mother by the will of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He gave his Holy Mom to be our Holy Mom as well. It was the Lord's will. No one else's. No one else's, my beloved. So we thank our Holy Mother for giving us the Savior and the Redeemer of the world. And we thank the Lord Jesus for his wonderful mom, the Virgin of all virgins. She's the only mother that is virgin. She's the only woman that is mother and virgin at the same time. Just like the Lord Jesus is so unique in his birth, he was born of a woman with no earthly father, for his father is the one who art in heaven. So as the Holy Mother is the only woman that is virgin and mother at the same time. Amazing. Amazing how God works and operates in every one of us. So we thank you, Lord, for your mom, and we thank you, mom, for your beloved son, who is God revealed in the flesh. The, inca the Logos incarnate. Um, I'd like to share a couple of things about the gospel of today. One is, to every Christian that confesses and professes Jesus Christ as their Lord and God. If you believe that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, then this is something from the gospel of today for all of us and all of you. Augustus Caesar ruled and conquered the world. He was the most powerful man on earth. I don't think there are presidents. I don't think there are leaders of the 21st century as powerful as Augustus Caesar. No matter how powerful the United States of America cannot in the open claim to be the one who rules over the entire world. They don't. Directly they don't. Indirectly maybe they do. But Augustus Caesar stood on the platform of the world and said, I rule. And if anybody's got a problem with this, let them face me. Nobody did. So Augustus Caesar, with all his might and power, with all his authority, woke up one day and said, if one of the least of my servants in my mansion comes today and says to me, I, Augustus Caesar, the ruler of the world, how many people do you have in your empire under your rulership? What will my answer be? I don't know. That is a very weak thing coming from the most powerful man on the face of this earth. I don't know how many people. This is very, very weak of you, Augustus. So Augustus being the emperor, the ruler of the world, he gave this decree that everyone in his empire to go back to their own town, to their own lineage and be included in this census. So the word came all the way to Israel, which was under the rulership of the Roman Empire. And it went all the way to Galilee. And it came all the way to this little village of Galilee called Nazareth, where the Holy Mother was betrothed to our father Joseph. And she was pregnant by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
And the word says, Augustus Caesar, the ruler of the world, says to everyone, you need to go back to your town, to your city, and be included in these senses. Because Augustus had this idea, he wants to know exactly how many people are under his authority. So the Holy Mother and our father Joseph the Just, being of the lineage of King David, they had to go to this city called Bethlehem because that is the city of King David. And they are of that lineage. So they get up and walk all the way from north to south. And would have taken them, I don't know, approximately maybe two to three weeks on foot. They had to go back to Bethlehem. And as they arrived in Bethlehem, the Holy Bible says it was time for the Holy Mother to give birth. And Jesus was born in a manger in Bethlehem. You see, Augustus Caesar, like our time and age, the 21st century, there are so many Augustus Caesars of the 21st century called secret societies. So many people think they are the rulers of the world because they have money, they have power, they have prestige, they have authority, they have position, they rule whether directly or indirectly, in, in public or behind closed doors, underground and behind the scenes. They rule because they say we can do whatever we want to do, like Augustus Caesar exactly. So when he gave that decree, he said, see, everybody did what I said because nobody dares to stand in me, I, Augustus. So according to this king, to this emperor, he thought he could do anything and everything and there is no power, neither in heaven nor on earth, that can stop him. So as far as he's concerned, he, uh, he does everything and he can get away with it very easily, not realizing it was God all along who was controlling Augustus Caesar. Who put that idea in his head? God, the Almighty. Why? Because there, was a, there is a prophecy that when the Messiah comes, he must be born in Bethlehem. That's a prophecy. And what is a prophecy? The Word of God. And the Word of God cannot be broken, neither can it be stopped by no power visible or invisible. So Augustus thought he did as he wished and nobody stopped him, not realizing God was controlling Augustus all along. So God put that idea in his head and it was, and he thought it was his idea. Then the decree went and came all the way to Nazareth. The Holy Mother and fa our father Joseph got up and walked all the way to Bethlehem because if the decree was not given by Augustus, Jesus would have been born in Nazareth and he would have broken the prophecy. Therefore, he wouldn't have been able to be the savior and the redeemer of the world. Because one of the things that qualifies Jesus as the savior and the redeemer is he needs to fulfill every single prophecy that was prophesied about him in the Old Testament. The Holy Mother wouldn't have got up. Our father Joseph wouldn't have got up. Why would you do that? Logically makes no sense. You're in Nazareth and she's pregnant, very hard to walk, let alone on foot three weeks to go all the way to the other side of the country. They wouldn't have done it at all. But so much for Augustus being in charge. When any human being, now please, let us open our eyes, our ears, our hearts, our mind, our soul, our entire being. 
When any human being thinks for a moment they can do anything and everything and get away with it, Satan has deceived that human being, period. Satan is laughing at that person. There, is, there has never been anyone that were free in the sense humanity defines freedom. There has never been anyone nor will ever be any human being that can claim freedom in its absolute definition. That day will never happen. Never was, never is, never will be. The moment we walk away from the true divine God, there is another power controlling that human being called Satan. And Satan will come in a very deceptive way in a very cunning way, in a very twisted way, and make you think you are free and you can do whatever you wish, as so many people, unfortunately, of our time and age, that 21st century are thinking and doing, yet not knowing that God is always in control. They think, like Augustus thought, he is free, but it was God. Who appoints presidents? This mighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So if people thought that they put a president in the White House and they got away with it, no, it was the Lord. They can rig the elections, they can falsify the truth, and they think they did whatever they wanted to do, and they did it. But no, it is God. It is the Lord in control. So who put Saddam in power? Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Who put Biden in power? Jesus Christ of Nazareth. No other power. Who put Albanese? The Lord Jesus. Nothing happens without the Lord's permission. But you may say, why do we have such a president? Why do we have such a prime minister? Well, let us ask ourselves, what have we done for the Lord all along? When we had the freedom, when we had good leaders that gave us that freedom and gave us that breathing space, what did we do for the Lord Jesus? We walked away from the Lord. The Lord is in control. The Lord knows what is good for you and what is not. He appoints at the right time and He removes at the right time because the Lord is God and God's timing is always perfect. Perfect. My beloved, my beloved Christians, we seek freedom, we seek democracy, we seek freedom of religion and freedom of speech, yet not realizing what we are truly seeking. Because what is freedom? What is the freedom of speech? Does it mean you can say anything and everything, whichever way, however way you wish to say it? No. What is the freedom of the human being? For you to be free to go out whichever way you want to go out, whether fully dressed or fully naked. You want to go out and be a male or a female or in between or none of the above. Is this freedom? <laughs> My beloveds, the Lord Jesus came to give us one of them one of the most beautiful gifts ever given to any human being or to the entire human race, freedom. 
the Lord gave us freedom but freedom defined by him not by anyone else you know on an earthly level on an earthly level when are we free when we abide by the law isn't it imagine with me for a moment we're driving on the road and the speeding sign says 80 kilometers an hour or if you're in America maybe 65 miles I don't know <laughs> you're driving and it says 80 kilometers an hour if you are doing 90 kilometers an hour and it's double demerits like now it is be careful you you are so 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 cautious so concerned you're sweating because you you just hope there is no police car hiding somewhere and the radar is targeted at your vehicle because if you are caught by that radar you can kiss your license goodbye so what happens when i am breaking the law i am not free am i do I drive absolutely comfortable? No, I'm on the edge. I'm worried. I'm concerned. I don't know. But imagine this with me. I'm doing 75 or 78 or 79 kilometers in an 80 zone. Let there be a million zillion police cars on the side of the road. It matters not. I'm free because I followed the rules. So when is a human being free? When they abide by the law. However, which law? It needs to be the number one thing, God's law. And I'll say this. This God, his name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I've said this before and I'll say it again. It's got nothing to do with being a Christian. Nothing to do with being a bishop. Nothing to do with Rebe, like having read the Holy Bible. Listen, there are so many Christians, they don't even know who Jesus Christ is. So many Christians have no idea. No idea. It's got nothing to do. You were born in a Christian family, baptized as Christian and raised as Christian and went to church and received the Holy Body and the blood of Christ. And you read the Holy Bible and you listen to preachings. It's got nothing to do with that. You need to come and know Jesus for yourself. You need to establish this relationship one-on-one, -on -one, an intimate personal relationship. What do you know of Christ? Don't tell me I heard someone says this and this and this. My preaching to all of you is like that salad. You know, the appetizer. It is not the main meal. You know, when you go to a restaurant, you don't order the main meal straight away. You go and get your snacks. Have a snippet on this one and on that one and taste this and taste that. Now it is the appetizer. Now my appet, my, my, I'm, I'm ready now. I'm ready to, to dig in into the main meal. The preaching is the appetizer. You need to chase the main meal. We are laying down that path, paving it for you, but it is up to you to walk in it. Any preacher and every preacher is there to put you on the right path, but it is up to you to walk it. It's not up to the preacher. I listened to this bishop saying this and this and this. What have you done about it? What have you done about it? So you need to come into a, a real, actual relationship with the Lord. So when you hear a preacher say you need to pray, you better pray. When the preacher says you need to come to church on a regular basis, you need to come. When the preacher says you need to read the Holy Bible and become familiar with it, you need to do that. You see, what's the point of going to the doctor? and getting all the medications necessary for your full recovery and then you take all that medication and put it on the shelf or throw it in the bin and go back after a month and blame the doctor for not healing you excuse me 
the doctor will not drink the, po the, the medication on your behalf. <laughs> You're sick, not the doctor. <laughs> I'm sick. Have you ever gone to a doctor fully healed? Like nothing wrong with you? Do you go to the doctor when nothing is wrong with you? Poor doctors, they do need sometimes that recognition. Even when you're not sick, just go to the doctor and say, look, um, I'm not sick doctor. I just can't say th thank you for what you do. God bless you and remain honest, okay? <laughs> but when do we go to the doctor? When we acknowledge and confess that we are sick. So when you come and listen to the preaching, saying do this and do this it's exactly those prescriptions of the doctor so what do you do with those prescriptions you need to apply them take them don't just go out and say oh that was a nice preach oh well, some nice words i had i learned something what do you mean you need to apply them you need to apply them my beloved i need to come and Begin a relationship with the Lord Jesus. Begin a relationship with the Lord. I've put you on that path. You need to walk it now. So the first message, if you believe in Jesus Christ, don't ever fear whatever is happening in the world. Everything is under the control of the Lord. No one rules except Jesus. But when something happens, like the pandemic that happened in 2020, when something happens like that, what did we learn from it? Yes, it was a pandemic. It was never a pandemic. It was a pandemic. There was never a vaccine. It was just a jab. But what do you learn? What do you learn from all of this? I learned number one. No power, neither in heaven, nor on earth, nor beneath it. Satan and all of his powers, no power can ever shut the door of the church. The only one who closes the door of the church is the rightful owner, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. For the church is to be closed, that is telling me and you and everyone who calls themselves a Christian, the Lord is not happy with his beloved children. We have walked away from him. It is a reminder where are you heading where are you going what are you doing with your life what are you doing with your destiny what are you doing don't fear no one and don't fear anything when Christ is truly your Lord your God your King your everything what are you fearing somebody might come and kill you hallelujah You'll do me the, the greatest, you know, thing. I don't fear nothing. You see, when you don't have anything to lose, you have no fear. The only time you'll have fear is when you are afraid of losing something. But when you have the Lord Jesus, you've got nothing to lose. And even if you go to the grave, the Lord will raise you from there, for He is God revealed in the flesh, who stood in front of that tomb of Lazarus and called Him forth after being rotted in the grave for four days so the first thing we need to do is build a relationship establish a relationship with the Lord Jesus how do you begin a relationship well look at the relationships on earth learn from them when when you my dear Jono meet this girl who happens to be Rachel for the first time ever and I hope you don't meet her at the club or at the pub. It's the wrong place. So when you see this girl and you say, Whoa, who is this good looking girl? You go up to her and bump accidentally. And say, oh, sorry, I didn't see. And deep down you say, your beauty blinded me. So you bump into her and you say, G'day. What's your name? My name is John O. Well, you need to be an Aussie, eh? 
So you begin a relationship with talking. When was it the last time you, you talked to the Lord? When was it? And I mean a genuine talk. Not a surface level. No. What is a genuine talk? Is when you go, you drop everything for him. You see, because when you are with the one you love the most, everything else ceases. Everything else ceases. And the number one thing that ceases and must cease is time. It's time. Because the last thing you will do is look at the watch because you don't want the time to take you away from the one you love. So you need to enter into a dialect conversation. Genuine, from the heart, no lip service, no falsification of the truth. Come as you are. Go to the Lord and say, look, Lord, I've done everything evil under the sun before your holy sight. I've done this and I've done this and I've done this. And I'm confessing it to you, Lord. I want to talk to you. Please answer me, Lord. When you are genuine, speak from the heart. The Lord only recognizes the language of the heart. Because the heart never lies, but the lips and the deceptive tongue always lies. Build a relationship with the Lord. When you begin this journey, the Lord will start building you up, making you stronger, wiser. Then whatever happens after that is secondary. No, no, nothing to do with it. So whatever Augustus Caesar is doing in the 21st century, who gives one penny? It is the Lord in control of those who do things underground, above ground, behind closed doors, behind closed curtains. The Lord sees all. The Lord is in control of all, including Satan. So what are you afraid of? Why are you worried? Leave everything in the Lord's capable hands. Without using the word, but. Please don't use it. But Bishop, like I'm, I can't, I can't stop not think about, it's not working out. Okay, I'll leave it in his hand, but I'm going to die tomorrow. The doctor said you're going to die. But, you know, I know I trust in the Lord, but if I don't do this, it's not going to work. Listen. When you leave it in his hands, you go and do whatever you got to do, but do it with confidence, not shaky ground, not fear, not anxiety, because these are all against faith. Against faith. So, Augustus Caesar gave a decree. He thought he was doing whatever he wants, not realizing it was God <laughs> in control. Because God wanted our father Joseph and the Holy Mother, you know, pregnant with the Savior of the world. He wanted them to go to Bethlehem. They wouldn't have gone unless Caesar gives that decree. So who did it? God. Not Caesar. God. And a piece of advice to all church leaders. If you think you can do whatever you want as a church leader, if you think you can introduce laws as you wish as a church leader, you're mistaken. The Lord never left his throne vacant. When the Lord Jesus comes to someone like me, a piece of wreck, and then he gives me his, his rank. He gives me his throne. He gives me his name, his title, everything. And then he says, sit on that throne. That doesn't mean the Lord Jesus is gone and left that position vacant for me to do as I please. That will never happen. The Lord is the only rightful owner of the church. He is the only head of the church. There is no other head but him. It is his love, his grace, his mercy that puts leaders in his place. But that doesn't mean he has gone on holidays or left it vacant. So if any church leader come up with any laws 
that are contradictive to the teachings of the one and only Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that leader is absolutely mistaken from head to toe. They need to repent, otherwise they will be punished by the Messiah. Regardless what their position is, high or low, nobody escapes the justice of God. Nobody. Nobody. Trust in the Lord. Build that relationship with the Lord. Focus on the Lord. Don't focus on what's happening around you and in the world. Leave everything in the Lord's capable hands. I don't want to keep you too long even though I'm very tempted. But the other thing, my beloveds, let me share this with you on how God operates in some ways. We will never fully fathom God. Impossible. But we have glimpses according to His grace. When God comes to do anything, God's beginning of that work is the end. So God's beginning is the end, not the beginning. Let me explain what I mean. See, when God came to create Adam, the first creation ever, He created Adam. The beginning was, his, was creating Adam. But that beginning was the end result, not the beginning. So God created Adam, the end result, and then came back and started working in Adam to get him to what he had created in the first place. This is why Adam was created adult, not a baby. <laughs> you with me? So if anybody asks you, say, well, why was Adam created mature? Because that was the end result, not the beginning. The beginning is a baby, but the end is an adult. So God's beginning is the end. So what is that telling me and you? Since God's beginning is the end, what are you worried about? <laughs> you see, we worry about the end result, don't we? Not so much the beginning, but we worry about the end result. Well, since the end result is maturity, well, God is going to get you there. Just let him. Let him be. You know, when, uh, when you buy a, a television set, what do you buy the TV set at its infancy stage? <laughs> a couple of cables here and a couple of screws over there. No, you get the full package. You get the end result. But that end result package is the beginning. Because the moment you get it, that you get it mature. But what do you do? You open the box. That's the beginning. And then you get the manual and you throw it away because you're a genius. Don't we all do that? Geniuses. I was, I was talking to these beautiful people the other day. It was uh, Christmas carols. I was invited by these wonderful uh, Indian Christian people. Um, and I said, Valerie Nani. <laughs> Which means thank you very much. Um, I thought they were, gonna, they were gonna get upset, but they were very happy when I did that. <laughs> God bless them. I love our beloved Indian people. As when I joke, I joke because the only reason I joke is when I love someone. I cannot joke with someone that is totally a stranger to me. But when that someone is very close, I'm more relaxed. I can joke with them. So. When you get that package, the very first thing when you open that box is that little booklet called manual. Manual is a compounded word, two in one. Manu, abbreviation of manufacturer. Al, A-L, Al in Latin means mind. So manu, manufacturer, al, mind, manufacturer's mind, they called it manual. So what is the manual? The manufacturer's mind. Why? Because this manufacturer who came to create this television, it was in his mind, this idea, and no one else's except his. So when he came and brought this mind of his, and made it possible, it became a TV set. 
this mind of the manufacturer is the only one that knows how this TV operates from A to Z because everything in this TV was in his mind. Since he put it together, what did this manufacturer do? The manufacturer put his mind on paper and sent this book with the product to say to the purchaser two things. I give you a guarantee and I give you a warranty. Two different things. I'll give you a guarantee. If you follow my manual, if you follow the manufacturer's mind, I'll guarantee you everything in the book the TV will do for you. And then if you follow the manual to the dot, I will give you a warranty. If the TV does not function as the manual, I warranty you a, an absolute full replacement of a new one. God came to create his product called Adam, the human race. So when God came to create, he began with his end. He did not create a screw or a cable. He created the full product. So the beginning of God is the end of that product. He came and created Adam. And then he packaged Adam. And in that package, he put his book, Manuel, the manufacturer's mind. What is the manufacturer's mind? The Holy Bible. That is, that is the manufacturer's mind, the Holy Bible. So he put the Holy Bible in that box and he sent, he shipped it from heaven to earth. Now the genius is us. We opened the box and we grabbed the manual and said, I don't want this. I know what I'm doing. Mom, dad, this is Australia. This is America. This is Canada. This is Europe. This is not some village in the Middle East. You ignorant people. You illiterate people. Mom, what qualifications do you have? You didn't even finish primary school. Look at me. I'm a uni graduate, Sydney University, Notre Dame. You don't know nothing, mom. I'm genius. I'm educated, mom. You, you barely can read and write. I'm a doctor. I'm a lawyer. I'm a professor. But an atheist. <laughs> so we took that manual and we said, we can figure it out. You see, what happens when you throw that manual aside? The only thing is left for you and me to do with that product is experiment with it. <laughs> because this product has the mind of the manufacturer. I'm not the manufacturer. I'm not God to know how this human operates and functions. So what happens when we grab the remote control? What do we do? We experiment. Let me see what this button does. Oh, oh. Nothing, no screen. I'm experimenting. When we begin to experiment 100%, we will abuse the product. 100%. Because we are trying to be the manufacturer, yet we're not. We're trying to be God. We can never be. We can never read the mind of God. How can we know how to operate this product called the human being? So we took the manual, God's mind, and we put it aside. I don't need to read the Holy Bible. I'm a good Christian. Well, I don't need God at all. There is no God. I'm God. So be, that human begins to experiment because that's all they can do. So they started experimenting. What happened? They became neither a male nor a female. That's one of the experiments. The other one, we became stubborn, not accepting 
any advice from no one because I'm experimenting. You see, mom comes and dad comes to the children. Yes, my dear son, are you listening? My son, don't mix with those so-called friends. You call them friends, but I can see they are troublesome. Don't go with them, my son, daughter. Don't mix with these girls. They are negative influence on you. Ah, oh, come on, mom, leave me alone because I'm experimenting. I put the manual aside. I'm not listening. The day I don't listen to God, I will listen to no other being, period. So you experiment, my son. It's not a joke. So when you go out with those so-called friends, let me see what's going to happen to you after one, two, six months, one year, two years, you'll end up in a lot of trouble. You either get destroyed, killed or in prison or lost for good. You have destroyed your future. One reason being you did not listen to the manual. You did not read it. So you experimented with this product called a human being. You destroyed, abused this product. See, without God, there is nothing good. Without God, there is no morals, there is no ethics, there is no value, there is nothing. God. Adam experimented, did not follow the manual, broke God's word, fell short of the glory of God, and the entire human race was destroyed. That's why God, out of his love and mercy, he said, I will give you a warranty and a, and a guarantee. Now, this product that is coming soon in the end of times, this product will do as I say, as God says, no one else. Jesus was born to be the guarantee and the warranty for every human being that accepts Jesus Christ as the manual revealed in the flesh. The manufacturer's mind revealed in the flesh. When you go to Jesus and listen to his directions, he will give you a guarantee that you will do everything God wants you to do. And when you listen to Jesus and you break something in that product, the human being, he gives you a warranty that I will replace it for you and you. You were a sinner. I made you a saint. You were lost and I found you. You were dead and you are alive today. I gave you a replacement. The former Adam, I replaced him completely with the latter Adam. The latter Adam is the perfect man, perfect God. In the human level, he is the ultimate of all ultimates. This is the standard of God as far as humanity is concerned. God wanted every human being to be like Jesus, the perfect man. God says, when you look at Jesus, this is the way I wanted the human being to be like. Total obedience to God, not to themselves, not to Satan. But the problem, when we experiment for ourselves, we ruin things, we destroy things, we abuse things. This girl, a teenager, to all my beloved teenagers, sons and daughters, true story. I received this phone call this is a little while back ago. Are we listening, my dear son? We need to listen. This, this, I received this phone call from a very distressed mother. A very distressed mother. She calls crying, crying, crying. I barely understood what she was saying. I sat in the car and I actually, <laughs> I was speeding. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God there was no coppers. <laughs> I'm confessing. <laughs> I thought like something went extremely wrong. So I go there. She is absolutely shattered, the mother. She said, my teenage girl, the other day the police came and knocked at the door. I opened to my shocking surprise a constable and a couple of other police officers. They said, is your daughter home? 
She said, yes. She started shaking. What's wrong, officer? Yes, my daughter is home. He said, um, your daughter has been in a place where someone got killed. What? Officer, you're at the wrong address. My daughter never leaves home. And when she leaves, she tells me where she goes. I know exactly where she was yesterday. He said, I don't think so, mother. Can we come in and talk to your daughter? Please come in. Daughter, come out. She came out shaking, started crying. She knew she was in trouble. They interrogated the girl. And what happened? This girl, as she, was, uh, as she was leaving the house, she said, Mom, I'm going to my girlfriend's house, so and so. Mother, she knows that family very well, so she was comfortable for her daughter to go there, according to her. She said, it's okay, daughter, you can go there. Not knowing the mother, she lied to her mom. She did not go to that girlfriend's house. She went with other girls to a birthday party, totally different location and in that place there was people there that were asking for trouble other people came who were against them and a fight started ending up with somebody being killed in front of this girl's eyes so they came asking her did you see the murderer a teenager she could have lost her future why because she did not speak the truth to her mom. My son, my daughter, I beg you, I beg you. When parents come and say no to you, they do it out of love, out of concern, out of being protective. Because they don't want you to do the wrong things which they did. In their life you see they have experience of life you my son you my daughter you do not have experience of life you are still experiencing it but you are not experienced enough but mom and dad are older than you wiser than you more mature than you they've done it they've been there in the highs and the lows of life they have experienced so many things yes they were also teenagers and they chose the wrong friends and walked in the wrong path. They veered off and walked in dark alleys. They know exactly what it's like. That's why out of love and fear for your well-being child, they are extremely cautious and careful. This is why you think they are suffocating you. They are not. They are worried about your well-being. Do not abuse the product. Use the manual. Start reading the Holy Bible because the only one that is going to teach you on how to have good morals, good value, ethics, and principles of life is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So next time when mom and dad say no, you say to them, yes, no problem. If they allow you do it, if they don't respect their wishes. Because when you listen to mom and dad, you're listening to God. Respect your father and mother. This is one of the ten, one of the commandments of those ten which God gave to Moses. He says, respect your father and mother so that I may bless you and give you a life abundant. When you respect mom and dad, you're respecting God. But mom and dad, you need to respect God in order for your children to respect you. What goes around comes around. St. Paul talks about this so beautifully. The Lord Jesus is the perfect illustration of what God is looking for in the human race. God's intention was for all humanity to listen to Him. Not listen to themselves or to any other power, but listen to Him. Today the Lord came to give us that opportunity so we can have that opportunity once again to come back to God so embrace the Lord Jesus thank the Lord Jesus for coming thank the Lord Jesus for being born in Bethlehem 
the house of bread. That's what it means. Beth, Lham, or Lchem. Beth means house. Lchem or Lham or Lahmo means bread. The house of bread. And he said in John 6, I am the bread, the living bread that descended from heaven. He who eats me shall live in me forever. I'll leave you with this last word. And some people are smiling. When you look at a map of any country, where is north in the map? Where is north? At the top, correct? Come on, don't be afraid. <laughs> You're scaring me now. Have you ever studied geography? <laughs> okay, good. Um, when you look at any country's map, where is north? Where is the no northern territory? <laughs> the top of the continent, yes? Where is south? At the bottom. Uh -huh. where, was, where is Bethlehem? South of Israel. So where is south according to the map? Bottom. What's the north of Israel? Galilee. Where was the Lord Jesus born? In the south, Bethlehem, below. Where was the Lord raised till the age of 30? North, Galilee. He chose Galilee. He chose his bride beginning with Galilee. Why? Because the Lord says, I came to be born in your failure. All of you had failed God. You have hit rock bottom. I was born in a manger. My mom covered me with those cloth and put me on that hay. Psalm number one talks about the hay that will be thrown in fire. So that hay is us. And what is wheat? That grain of wheat is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is the grain of wheat. We are the hay. All of us were destined to be thrown in fire in hell because we broke God's word. The, the grain of wheat was placed on the hay, which is me and you and all of humanity. And when he was placed on that hay, the grain of wheat changed the hay into a grain of wheat. To be stored in the barns and the barn is the kingdom of God. He was born in our failure. He appeared to the world at the age of 30. When you go in an, in, uh, into an exam and you get 30 out of 100, what does that mean? You failed, <laughs> isn't it? The Lord was revealed to the world at the age of 30. This is our failure. He was born in the south, Borom, but he came to take us from south to north Galilee into heaven, from hell to heaven, from earthly to heavenly from physical to spiritual, from slaves to the sons of God, from darkness to the light, from bondage to freedom. He changed the hay into a grain of wheat. Isn't that amazing? Thank the Lord for this glorious and divine intervention. Today heaven embraced earth. Today heaven kissed earth. Today God became man. Then what's your problem? Prior to that you had a problem because you couldn't go to God. Can you see him? No. Can you reach him? No. Can you understand him? No. He cannot. But this God became like us. Now I can see him. I can talk to him and he is six foot one. Browny crispy hair split in the middle all the way to the shoulder. Long tan skin face with greenish eyes. And after 2023 years, he is still 33 years of age and kicking baby. He will never age. I've seen him. I've seen him. He's amazing. No words can describe his beauty. So now I can say I've seen God. Yes. Because when I looked at the face of Jesus, that's the face of God. It's the only way to God is the face of Christ. So when God became man, he shared everything with us except sin. 
He never sinned. He only carried our sins. Today, on his birth, he gave us hope. Next time, on his epiphany, the baptism of the Lord at the River Jordan, he gave us faith. And the next one, at his resurrection, Sunday resurrection, he gave us love. Birth, hope. Baptism of the Lord of the River Jordan, faith. The resurrection of the Lord, love. And the grace of all is love. And the ultimate miracle the Lord performed in the flesh was rising from the dead. Because no human died and rose on their own, except Jesus did it. His tomb is empty. And he says, he who hears my word, believes in it. Even if you die, you will live. But he who takes my body, and drinks my blood will live in me forever that's a promise and this is God and God is known to fulfill every promise he makes so may the birth of the Lord Jesus be an abundant blessing to all of you to your families to your loved ones may it be a time of transformation revival a change of heart and a change of mind come back to the Lord Jesus be close to him adhere to his manual the Holy Bible read the manual follow the instructions do not experiment and say let me find out what this button does if I press it don't try and do that because that could be the breaking point if you do it why take the risk there is too much to be lost here, too much at stake. Then follow the manual to make sure everything you do will be perfect. Amen. Amen. Are you sure? You love me? I don't know about that one. All right. Very good. I'll tell you this joke. This son went to his mom. May God bless every mother and every father. So the son went to mom and said, Mom, please, I beg you, please pray for me. I need your prayers, mother. She said, Look, my son, I pray that you find a rental property without paying rent. I pray that you go and have and you eat and drink without paying a penny. And I pray that people guard you day and night. The son ended up going into prison. That's the only place where you live without rent, you eat without paying, <laughs> and you are guarded by those guards day and night, baby. So next time when you ask for your parents' prayer, you better be very specific. All right, otherwise you'll end up in prison. <laughs> Just wanted to make you laugh. Well, if anything, this joke is telling us that parents' prayers are heard. <laughs> be careful. <laughs> And they are heard. I can assure you they are heard. Um, let us bow our heads and ask the Lord Jesus on this glorious and historical day, his birth, the day that changed the history of mankind, to make us worthy to come forth and receive him in the true body and the true blood of Christ, our King. Amen. Our good God and full of mercy, our good God and full of mercy, whose grace and mercy is poured upon all. Pour, my Lord, the compassion of the delightfulness of your love upon your servants, and again transform them in the hope of renewal to the life of repentance. Renew in them your Holy Spirit, by whom they are sealed for the day of salvation. Purify them by your compassion from all flesh and spiritual blemishes, and assure the hope of their faith by the aid of your grace, and instill the works of their behavior in the paths of righteousness. Please them along with the saints in your kingdom by the assurance of the hope of their faith in the adoption as your children and in the joy of your absolving mysteries. Empower them by the aid of your mercies to observe your commandments and fulfill your will, to confess, worship, and praise your holy name, the Lord of all, Father and Son, and Holy Spirit forever. Amen. <coughs> May the Lord Jesus forgive us and make us worthy to come forth and receive him in the true body and the true blood, the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. 
Um, I would like to take this opportunity also to thank all of our um, beloved committees. So if you please do allow me, uh, I'd like to, I thank the Lord Jesus for all the committees that have been working and are still working and I pray they continue to work diligently and faithfully um, to, uh, for the, to the Lord Jesus first and foremost and then to his holy house. I'd like to um, thank and I pray the Lord blesses our uh, church council or the church committee. May the Lord Jesus bless them all. Also the Good Shepherd Committee and also the Divine Heart Sunday School Committee. I would like to thank also our beloved uh, choir, the Assyrian and the English choir. And they have done a magnificent work, just like all the other committees as well, uh, during carols and uh, yesterday and today. And always they've sang absolutely magnificent angelic voices. I'd like also to thank our beloved media team. And um, uh, because of our media team, all these um, church services, whether it be uh, liturgy services or um, Bible preaching, you know, we thank the Lord for the media team. And I was told not long ago that just TikTok alone. <laughs> We've hit 1.3 billion views worldwide. So there you go. See, when you leave everything in the Lord's capable hands, He will take you to horizons you couldn't even ever think of, dream of, imagine of. Let the Lord work in you. It's not about 1.3 billion views on TikTok or any other social media platform. It's about the Lord. It's about the Lord. It's about the Lord. You know, I just want to thank the media team as well. Now I can't have my private life any longer and I can't be quiet wherever I go. Like even though I'm driving in the, on the road. Please look, look in front of you, man. Don't go on the curb or hit a car in front of you. Wherever I go, I stop at the traffic light. A car pulls, and then I, I hear somebody. Oh, I, we watch you on YouTube, on Instagram, on TikTok. I said, yes, okay. Thank you so much. I thank the Lord, brother. And wherever, like it's amazing, it's amazing. Like may God bless them all. May God bless them all. You know, it's just incredible, incredible. I walk in the street, they come. In the airports, custom offices. Like even at airports, like in their uniform, huh? uh, you changed my life. Oh. In America, there was these police officers walking in the airport. Police officers. One, a couple of them came, they saw me and they came, said, God bless you. We, I follow you on YouTube. You've touched my heart. You've changed my life. Thank you so much. Amazing. Um, even non-Christians, even non-Christians. You know, like I, I, I stop there for a moment. I say, are you sure you're talking to the right person? <laughs> because I know myself, I'm good for nothing. If there's anyone that is a piece of wreck, is me. If there's anyone that is useless and hopeless, is me. But what is that telling me, like as me? This person is mighty. This person is holy. This person is love. This person is mercy. This person is kindness. This person is humility. This person is awesome. It is the Lord. The Lord, my beloveds. The Lord. We need to see the Lord in everything and in everyone. It's the Lord. Once I went to Paramata. I walked with some people. We walked into this restaurant. Like, I don't know, there was a, lot, a lot of them were closed. This guy was open. I can't remember what, uh, what okay, it was a Sunday or something. I can't remember. So anyway, we walked in there. And then the owner, oh, I have been praying 
and asking, where do I find this man? I've been following you. My entire family follows you. The owner of the restaurant. Oh, look at the Lord. He's amazing. He brought you all the way to the restaurant. Habib Albi, we love you. I ate, I drank for free. The Lord Jesus said it. It's the same Lord yesterday, today, forever is the same Lord. When the disciples left their professions, when the disciples left their jobs, they became unemployed, no more income coming. The Lord said, did you one night sleep hungry? Did you one night sleep in need? They said, no, exactly. The Lord even paid for my meal. Because when you have the Lord, you don't need anything else. He's amazing. Just trust Him. Let Him be free in your life to shape you, mold you, make you the way He wants you to be. Not anyone else. Amazing. Like after we ate, I didn't pay. And, and then He said, Thank you so much. I said, I should thank you, brother. He said, No. He said, thank you because the Lord answered my prayer. See, see how amazing that is? The Lord. It's the Lord. Just like John the Beloved, when the Lord revealed himself the third time after resurrection at the Sea of Galilee. Because everybody said, who is that? I love it when the Holy Bible speaks in this way. John the Beloved said, it's the Lord. This in its own, if you dwell on it, if you contemplate on it, if you breathe it in and let it dwell in you and go into every single fiber of your being, it's the Lord. Just this word, it's the Lord. Wow. It's amazing. If you think about it and really live this, it's the Lord. I got up this morning, it's the Lord. I ate, it's the Lord. I put on my outfit, it's the Lord. I was able to leave home. It's the Lord. I drove. It's the Lord. I sat. It's the Lord. I got up. It's the Lord. I breathed. It's the Lord. I came back home intact. It's the Lord. I saw this and this and this person in today. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. I prayed on this person and was healed. It's the Lord. I preached and this heart changed. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. Just this alone, if you live it, the heaven of all heavens is yours. It's the Lord. I made it. It's the Lord. I built the house. It's the Lord. I built the church. It's the Lord. Billions of people are listening to, to the preaching. It's the Lord, not me. It's the Lord. Love the Lord. Amen. The Lord was born today for you and me. And for the whole world. The birth is the Lord. So thank you, media team, for um, <clears throat> helping me getting a free meal. <laughs> One day I was driving on Horsley Drive, right? So I'm driving and this car comes like he had, looks like he was a landscaper. He beeped the horn while driving and was turning as well. Bishop, we love you. I looked, there was lawn mowers and everything. I was going to say, can you mow the lawn, please? <laughs> oh, man, oh, it's wonderful. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. In Arizona, sorry, I like, I'm just getting tempted here. In Arizona, like when we had a Bible preach in Phoenix, um, as we were coming out of the, that, that uh, venue, I was surrounded by bodyguards and securities and we had we had ex navy seals can you believe that and there was army there was police officers there was a quite a number of them and as they escorted me out of the venue like they were afraid if somebody comes and attacks i'm walking and then i thought i'm donald trump something <laughs> here's the president of the united states of america oh what's up brother if they just had known like in my spare time I like to go and sit on the lomo and mow the lawn, dig some, you know, the ground and plant some, some flowers. I love doing, you know, gardening. If they see me in that kind of outfit, they're going to say, what are, we, what are we bodyguarding this guy for? That was amazing. I said, well, am I the president or something? All of a sudden, all these 
Navy SEALs around him. It's amazing, amazing what the Lord does when you let him to be free in your life. Just let him. Allow him, please. Let him. I thank the Lord for our youth ministry committee. I thank the Lord for our Teens for Christ committee. I thank the Lord for the Good Samaritan Aid Society and the two beautiful initiatives, Food Angel, where we provide hampers, and Feeding Hearts, where we go to the city, feeding the homeless, the brothers, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, the decoration team, with all these Christmas decorations that you see, we have a decoration team here. God bless them all. I thank the Lord for the teachers who teach the Lord's language, the Aramaic or the Syriac language. And the, the, uh, the men's gardening and the landscaping committee as well. We have, uh, they, they are the youngest people in, in, in any committee. They are 60, uh, 50 plus. Uh, so they are the youngest um, team members in the, in the entire committees. Um, I also thank the Lord Jesus for our um, Harp of the Spirit Kids Choir. And all the teachers involved, I, I thank the Lord for all of them. And I thank the Lord also for our priests and for our deacons. May God bless them all. And most importantly, may God bless you all for the church and for all of us. Amen. So let's put our hands together for, for the Lord and for everyone. Merry Christmas. And uh, if I don't see you for the new year, I wish you a, a, a very happy 2024. Uh, just one thing, we are celebrating the uh, New Year's Eve Holy Mass service here at the church, which will be Sunday the 31st of December, Sunday 31st of December at 10 p.m. 10 p.m. We are celebrating the Holy Mass here at the church, Sunday 31st of December, 10 p.m. If you're not having any commitments here or there and you're able, you've got the time, please do come and join us uh, in celebrating uh, this Holy Mass service for the new year. And the first second in the new year, we give it to the Lord Jesus. That's amazing. So we say, Lord, we love you. And that first second that takes into 2024. So I pray to see you on Sunday, the 31st of December at 10 p.m. For the Holy Mass service, it'll be in three languages. You can't miss English, Arabic, and Assyrian. Also, Bible preaching uh, in Assyrian. Uh, we are coming back on the 8th of January. The Assyrian Bible preach is coming, is resuming on the 8th of January, um, Monday, 8th of January at 7 p.m. And the English Bible preach will resume on Friday, the 12th of January at 6 p.m. So we're coming back on Friday, the 12th of January at 6 p.m. God bless you. Merry Christmas and a very happy 2024. God bless. Let us pray, peace.